yesterday. You know, Rachel Reeves gets up, the Charles of the Exchequer, says the Tories have lied to the nation, they've hidden the figures. I mean, it was almost like a sort of old-fashioned Stalinist Soviet show trial. Um, the Tories are the guilty men, and, you know, they try to answer back, but they couldn't. But tucked in the middle of all of this, and not really getting the coverage that it normally would have done, is the whole scheme for winter fuel payments. Now, just to remind you, Tony Blair brought this in, you know, tw nearly 25 years ago. Uh, there were criticisms that some very rich pensioners were getting a winter fuel allowance. Um, but what she's basically done is said that unless you're on pension credits, you ain't going to get the winter fuel allowance. And this affects 10 million people, the vast majority of whom are not rich mm. or well off. And this comes at a time when gas prices have risen significantly. I have to say, I think it's rather a cruel thing to do, uh, and I certainly won't be voting for it as and when mm. I get the opportunity. There were times in the past where maybe the argument was it wasn't necessary, it had been given as a bribe, but it's almost like, it's almost like Labour is saying, well, we don't care about the pensioners because they're not going to vote for us anyway. Mm. And that money that could have gone to pensioners, has gone for massive public sector pay rises, including over 22% for junior doctors. I put it to you, Matthew Laza, Labour supporter. This is a very cynical thing she did. Oh, I wouldn't say it's cynical. I'd say it's a sad thing she's, she's done, but she's felt she had to do it because of the state of the public finances. It's not something that anybody in the Labour Party wants to do. As you say, it's a Labour uh, a policy. They were introduced uh, by the Labour Party. But, um, uh, you know, I wonder if you can remember who said who said about uh, 10 years ago, who's going to be brave enough to tell the wealthier pensioners that their benefits will be cut? Well, it was the Free Enterprise Group of Tory MPs mm. um, backed by the IEA, the think tank that, uh, that, that, that then gave us trustonomics. Um, and but, 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 <laughs> whoa a second. Yeah. Yes, but gas prices then were very affordable. <laughs> they are now... I'm having a row with my supplier at the moment. I know that. I, mean, I might get cut off. Because <laughs> I... I, I, I D-Bank now cut well, off the last system. The bill they sent them. The bill that, yeah. I can afford it. Yeah, of course. But the bill they've sent for my gas for the last year is extortionate. Yeah, look, it is... It is but, and I'm not a pensioner on no, a fixed income. Absolutely, and it is difficult, but sadly, when you look at the, the, when you look at the figures, um, fuel poverty now, partly because pensioners as a whole have got richer, that's not to say they're all rich, but pensioner poverty has gone down, um, uh, whereas family poverty, of the family poverty of those in working age has stayed static uh, over the past 25 years. So, they, I mean, it, it, sadly, um, the burden has to be shared, and the triple lock um, on pension, the state pension itself, is absolutely sacrosanct, uh, but in order to uh, to make the books balance. I mean, this is not a cheap policy. It costs roughly the same as the whole of the spending on the Royal Navy. Mm. I mean, so we're looking, you know, it, it, it's two per billion uh, plus um, uh, in total, about one point, I think, seven billion for the yeah. for the people who are not going to get it uh, anymore. So it's serious money. I think Rachel's been brave by doing it at, at the beginning. Um, clearly, if there was to be another, you know, if fuel prices were to rocket as they did in the early days of the Ukraine war, I know obviously they're still much higher than they were before, yeah. then clearly the government would look at more support. Andrea, you know, you were recently representing a constituency with plenty of pensioners yes. and, not, and not many rich ones, I would guess. Absolutely. Um, uh, but what I find remarkable, Nigel, is that they are punishing the pensioners, but they're spending billions of pounds on the net zero climate change agenda. Well, which affects electricity prices. Absolutely. doesn't affect gas prices, but it affects... Mind you, mind you, the Americans pay half mm. for their gas yes. that we do, because do you know what they do? They frack and produce oh, their own. I'm pro-fracking. I've always yeah, I know been. You are. Natural, yes. So, so I just think, as you said, fuel prices are majorly high, and mm. why punish them at this time? Well, why are they trying to push um, Miliband trying to push his climate change change agenda so quickly? I mean, I would dump the agenda anyway for mm. net zero, and and I'd frack and I'd um, use coal, etc. Um, but we've we need to roll back on that, but they're not going to. And it just feels to me that they are punishing the pensioners, they're punishing those who want to work hard. Um, and, look, they're letting people out of prisons. Um, that's probably why um, chowdhury has got a long sentence, because they're letting these thousands of people out. Well, it's not all bad, then, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 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 <
also <laughs> having an amnesty on illegals as well, which they mentioned during which, the election. It, which, which, which it looks like coming. I mean, Matthew, well, it, you know, yeah. it is an interesting point. She talked about a black hole, a 20 billion black jacuzzi. With it. Oh, I watched it all, and Labour were cheering, and the Tories were indignant, and I was just laughing at the whole thing. But there's a real big black hole coming, and it's this. The last auction for offshore wind mm. in the North Sea didn't attract a single yeah, absolutely. bidder. Absolutely. Not a single yeah. bidder. So, Mike, and I'm not saying you can answer this, yeah. but if Ed Miliband, has got all these companies that are going to build vast arrays in the North Sea. I wonder what the price is going to be. And I wonder what that means, because all through the election, we were told that renewable energy would give us cheaper bills. It won't, will it? Well, it, it potentially it can, but it's a, big journey to get, it's a big journey to get there. Well, that's the point. I mean, one thing he has done is, he's, he, not many people notice this, he's involved the Crown Estate now, which actually uh, owns the, um, uh, you know, the, some of the seabed. Um, uh, but he actually wants to get the Crown Estate in developing the, uh, the fields themselves, because obviously, as you say, in the last auction, there were, mm. there were scarcity of bids mm. to, to, uh, to mm. never mind net zero, it was zero bids to get us to net zero. And that is the problem from, I mean, I used to work for Edmund about. That is the problem. He is absolutely passionate and committed to this, but it has to be done in a way that delivers uh, 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 that, that delivers for people who are worrying about their energy. But the problem is the lead time on that is, is huge, which is why that Labour's probably most populist policy of the election was it scrapped the Tory policy of making you get rid of your boiler. Um, so Labour does have a, a, a pledge that it won't, it, won't, it won't make force you to get rid of your gas boiler. Oh, look, you know, Boris Johnson went down this route <coughs> in a very, very big way, and, and, and you could argue that much of what Miliband's saying is not that different to Boris Johnson. Yeah. But the truth is, decarbonising the grid by, 20, by 2030 would cost far more for pensioners than exactly. losing their winter fuel. Well, and it's, I mean, there are, yes. I mean, you know, the truth of the matter is, is if you listen to the people at the sharp end, both uh, the, uh, the companies themselves, but also the workers via their trade unions, the GMB union and Unite mm. the union, are both absolutely clear that it's physically impossible to do that, yeah. partly because there aren't enough cables yeah. in the whole world to do it. So I think we've yeah. got, we've got to see is a dash of common sense. Yeah, and, um, we and, can't the, do and, it. And, and there's a potential conflict between Miliband and the Green Lobby and, and other voices in the government. So that is, watch out for that in the autumn, I say. Final thought on this. Do you think the Conservatives are not Opposition will oppose the net zero policies of the Labour Party or support them? I mean, given the makeup of the um, what's left of the party, they'll probably support it, but I want them to oppose it. OK, well, one little observation I've got from just a few weeks in that place is how much the front benches agree on most things. 